subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 12th of November. Indian PM Modi launches schemes to ease access to invest in government securities market. Bilawal meets PDM chief as Pakistan's opposition unites to oust government. Great Wall of Shimla made with plastic waste attracts tourists in India's hill town. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday launched two customer-centric initiatives of the Reserve Bank of India. The Prime Minister said the two schemes will ease access to government securities market for retail investors and increase investment avenues. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday launched two customer-centric initiatives of Reserve Bank of India or RBI and said this will widen the investment horizon for investors and make capital markets more accessible to them. The two schemes, the RBI Retail Direct Scheme and the Integrated Ombudsman Scheme, are aimed at easing access to government securities market for retail investors and improve customer grievance redressal mechanism. Government securities are basically debt issuances by the government. They are a type of financial investment instrument that offers safe and guaranteed returns to investors. छोटे निवेशक को सुरक्षित निवेश पर अच्छे रिटर्न का भरोसा मिलेगा और सरकार को इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के विकास के लिए देश के सामान्य मानवी की आशा आकांक्षाओं के अनुरूप नया भारत बनाने के लिए जो जो व्यवस्थाएं विकसित करनी चाहिए इसके लिए जरूरी संसाधन मिलेंगे Modi highlighted since 2014 when he became the prime minister non performing assets were recognized with transparency and public sector banks were recapitalized Prime Minister Modi said ease of investment trust of the common man on the banking system are as important as financial inclusion and ease of access Indian security forces neutralized another terrorist in a gunfight that broke out on Thursday evening in Jammu and Kashmir's Kulgam district taking the number of terrorists killed in the firefight to 2 police said on Friday the encounter broke out after police cordoned a house on the information of the presence of terrorists there and the terrorists opened fire on the security forces Both militants of Pakistan-based Hizbul Mujahideen outfit have been active for a long time in the valley with one of them involved in civil and killings and recruitment said police. The security forces also recovered arms and ammunition. The operation was still underway till the last reports came in. As many as 133 terrorists including many top commanders have been neutralized this year. The Jammu and Kashmir police has said unrest has simmered in Kashmir home to a separatist movement for decades. Security agencies have blamed Pakistan-based terror outfits for a spate in terror activities in Jammu and Kashmir in recent days. Concrete building tha, bahut bada building tha. To operation ko raat mein rokna pada. Aaj morning mein first light mein operation phir se resume hua, jisme jo purane terrorist maare gaye, ek Siraj Molvi hai, Siraj Mahdloh, jo September 2016 se active tha. Ye bahut sare civilian ke liye involved raha hai aur recruitment mein bhi kafi involved raha hai. Dusra Yawar Bhatt hai, to dono terrorist maare gaye. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari held a meeting with Maulana Fazlur Rahman, the chief of Pakistan Democratic Movement on Friday, months after parting ways with the multi-party opposition alliance. The development comes amid close coordination among the opposition parties in the parliament to adopt a joint strategy against the PTI government over rising inflation and other issues. Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari held a meeting with Maulana Fazlo Rahman, the president of PDM, the Pakistan Democratic Movement in Islamabad on Friday, months after parting ways with the multi-party opposition alliance in April. 
During the meeting, both leaders discussed matters related to current political situation, inflation, controversial electoral reforms, and other issues, the PPP informed in a series of tweets. The development comes amid close coordination among the opposition parties in the parliament to adopt a joint strategy against Prime Minister Imran Khan's ruling PTI government. Both the leaders, however, denied there were talks of PPP joining the opposition alliance. Opposition parties have also been holding a series of protests against all-time high inflation in the country, which locals claim has made life difficult. Prices of food items, fuel and almost all other essential commodities have witnessed an increase in recent days. In news from Afghanistan, an explosion hit a mosque in the Spinkhar district of Afghanistan's eastern Nangarhar province on Friday, wounding at least 12 people till the last reports came in. There was no immediate claim of responsibility for the attack, the latest in a series of blasts to hit mosques in Afghanistan over recent weeks, undermining the Taliban claim to have restored security after decades of war. Moving on, as winter approaches, many Afghans say they were unable to buy basic commodities and urban communities face food insecurity on levels similar to rural areas. Afghanistan's poor economic outlook since Taliban takeover has also limited how people stay warm this winter. Kabul residents say that Afghanistan's poor economic outlook has limited how people stay warm as winter approaches. Afghanistan was plunged into crisis in August after Taliban fighters drove out a Western-backed government, prompting donors to hold back billions of dollars in assistance for the aid-dependent economy. Incomes have dwindled and the poor have no choice but to rely on second-hand items to tide them over. Sales of firewood have also dropped significantly this year as people do not have much money to buy domestic heaters as well. Many Afghans prefer imported Turkish heaters which are more effective and can also be used with coal, while most domestic heaters only accept firewood as tinder. Using oil or gas to heat up homes is also a thing of the past, said a Kabul resident. Many Afghans are selling possessions to buy food and urban communities are facing food insecurity on levels similar to rural areas for the first time. Since the Taliban seized power, the United Nations has been struggling to get enough cash into Afghanistan to help deliver humanitarian aid to millions of people on the brink of famine and prevent the collapse of the economy and health and education services. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Several areas in Sri Lanka have continued to remain submerged in knee-deep flood waters, while the weather forecasters say the downpour is expected to ease in the next few days. The days of unexpected late monsoon rains have killed more than 38 people in the island nation and neighbouring India's Tamil Nadu state. Several areas in the island nation of Sri Lanka have continued to remain submerged in knee-deep flood waters following heavy rains which have killed at least 26 people and left more than 200,000 people affected across 17 districts. Roads were inundated by floods and houses and buildings partially submerged in Negombo city on Thursday. This time the water came in a very unusual way like a river, a resident said. Meteorological department officials have said they expect the low-pressure system to move away from Sri Lanka and the downpours to gradually ease in the next few days. Mm -hmm. 
Meanwhile, in neighbouring India's southern Tamil Nadu's Chennai city, authorities pumped out stagnant water in waterlogged areas as the rainfall subsided on Friday, bringing life back to normal after intense showers that killed at least 14 people this week. Weather officials, however, said rainfall was likely to continue in isolated places in Tamil Nadu over the next five days. The northern hill town of Shimla is among the top tourist destinations in India. Concerned about the rise in use of plastics, a hotel in Shimla has created a wall with plastic waste material artistically, which has been attracting visitors. Around 500,000 plastic bottle caps have been used to make the wall, which is being called the Great Wall of Shimla. Creating a new beginning in the direction of environmental protection, a hotel in hill town of Shimla in India's northern Himachal Pradesh state has created a wall out of waste materials which has been attracting attention of tourists. Concerned about the use of plastics in the town, which is a major tourist destination, the hotel staffs have created the Great Wall of Shimla, which is 275 feet long and 15 feet high. Nearly 500,000 plastic bottle caps and other plastic waste materials were used to create this colourful wall and visitors are appreciating the move. Only in the hills over here but even in the plains and in the cities, everyone should be using these kind of materials and these kind of practices to better the environment around us because as you can see Shimla is so beautiful. Because we are studying that every Shimla comes to Shimla when the tourists come to Shimla, there is a lot of plastic waste in every place, whether it is a wafers packet or a water bottle. So we thought to do something with the where the environment could be protected and the kids who are coming to Shimla get a message that we can do something. The Great Wall of Shimla has created a visible example to motivate the visitors to be respectful to our planet. The 10-day Alpasi festival at the Sri Padmanabha Swami Temple in southern India concluded with the traditional Arattu procession this week. The priests took the idols of Hindu god Vishnu from the royal palace of Travancore to the temple in a colourful procession on Thursday and local residents and tourists gathered to witness the event. Priest in Padmanabha Swami Temple of India's southern Kerala state took the idols of Hindu god Vishnu from the royal palace of Travancore to the temple and to meet the devotees across the town on Thursday in a colourful procession. The traditional Aratu procession on Thursday marked the end of 10-day long Alpasi festival that began from the temple and continued till the royal palace of King of Travancore Marthand near Shangu Mughom Beach. Local residents and tourists gathered to watch caparisoned elephants, singing devotees and colourful festivities that marked the procession where the idols of Padmanabha Swami, Narsimha Murthy and Thiru Vambadi Krishna were paraded in the city. This procession is done uh, twice a year and uh, the, the procession is meant for uh, bhaktas who cannot go to the uh, temples. Uh, and also it is not only for uh, man but also for the trees and uh, other uh, animals also. Not only for animals, it is for trees also because the trees also are bhaktas as per the Hindu philosophy and so uh, Bhagavan goes to the sea to take a bath. I have heard about it uh, a lot from my in-laws and uh, this is Alpashi festival and uh, I heard that it is done twice a year. So as you can see, it is beautifully decorated and uh, people are eagerly waiting to see it. Sri Padmana Bhaswami Temple is one of the richest temples in the world. It is a tradition for the devotees to parade the gods across the city twice a year so that they can witness the problems and grievances of their subjects. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Indian PM Modi launches schemes to ease access to invest in government securities market. Bilawal meets PDM chief as Pakistan's opposition unites to oust government. And Great Wall of Shimla made with plastic waste attracts tourists in India's hometown.
now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com you can also visit us on facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on twitter at sasianewsline that's all in tonight's edition we will see you same time next week have a great weekend Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India breaking news and views from India